Okay, here we have a question where they want us to calculate the surface area and volume of a cube and a cuboid. Well, let's start with the volume because that's the easiest. The formula for volume is that we take the volume, which we've defined here as being V. The volume we calculate by taking the length of our shape multiplied by, here's the length, multiplied by the breadth of our shape, multiplied by the height of our shape. So if we have a cube or a cuboid, it doesn't matter, we have exactly the same formula. The length multiplied by the breadth multiplied by the height. Uh, I've made the formula here, volume, and which I've also defined as being V, so now I don't have to write the whole word volume anymore, I can just write the letter V, equals length times breadth times height, which equals L times B times H. So I've shortened length to L, breadth to B, and height to H. So if we're going to calculate then the volume for the, um, the red uh, cuboid here, a cuboid is a shape that isn't regular, it, doesn't, it isn't a square with all, uh, a cube with all the sides the same, every single edge the same length. A cuboid has edges of different length and we can see here that we have a length of 4, a breadth of 2 and a height of 1 in the rectangle, in the uh, red cuboid. So here we have that the volume equals length times breadth times height which in the case of the red cube is 4 multiplied by the breadth of 2 multiplied by the height of 1. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 1 is 1. So we would have a volume of 8. But 8 what? Is it 8 elephants walking down the street, or is it 8 cars sitting in the car park? No. We have to think of what units did we have in the length. Well, the units that we had in length were centimetre, the units that we had in breadth were centimetre, and the units that we had in height were also centimetre. The length was 4 centimetres, the height was 1 centimetre, and the breadth was 2 centimetre. So the unit that I'm going to get in my volume is going to be 3 lots of centimetre multiplied by each other. And how do we represent that in maths? Well, anything multiplied by itself 3 times is raised to the power of 3. So centimetre cubed. So the volume of this cuboid in the, the red cuboid has a volume of 8 centimetres cubed. Now, let's look then at the blue cuboid. We've got exactly the same formula. The volume is length times breadth times height, which in the case of this cuboid, it's going to be 2. The length is 2, the breadth is 2, and the height is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. So the volume of this cuboid is also going to be 8 centimetres cubed. So the volume of these two cuboids are identical. What's going to happen then when it comes to the surface area? Well, let's have a look at that. We'll uh, write our volume calculations here. The answer that we got to volume, we'll write up here. The volume equaled 8 centimetres cubed for the blue and the volume equaled 8 centimetres cubed for the red. And then we will rub this out. So, let's... Um Okay, if we're now going to look at how would we calculate the surface area then? Well, let's start with the surface area of the cube because that's easy. Surface area, we have to think of, if we were going to wrap this cube in paper, how much paper would we have to have? Well, the cube has all six sides of the same, so let's take one of these sides here. Let's look at how much paper how much area is there on this side of the cube? Well, we know that the formula for area is length times breadth. So that the formula for surface area of 
one side equals A equals length times breadth. We already defined earlier that L was length and B was breadth. So in this case it would be 2 times 2, which is 4 centimetres, times centimetres, which is 4 centimetres squared. The units for area is always centimetre squared because what have we got? We've got 2 centimetres here multiplied by another 2 centimetres. 2 times 2 is 4 centimetres times centimetres is centimetre squared. So the area of one side is 4 centimetres squared, but all four areas of this cube are identical. All four of them have exactly the same dimensions. It's 2 centimetres long, 2 centimetres wide, and 2 centimetres high. So what we can say about the surface area for the whole of this cube is surface area it's the same as the 4 centimetres squared on the side that we added plus another 4 on the front plus 4 on the bottom plus 4 on the top plus 4 on the opposite side plus 4 on the back. Uh, instead of writing it like this of course 4 plus 4 plus 4 it's much more sensible in maths to write it as 4 centimetres squared multiplied by the number of sides we have, 6, because 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is the same as 4 times 6, equals 24 centimetres squared. So the surface area, the amount of paper that we would need if we were going to cover this cube in wrapping paper, would be 24 centimetres squared. What about for the red one then? Well, the red one is different because it doesn't have all identical sides. We would have to first start by calculating the front edge here. Let's look at this edge that is 4 centimetres long and 1 centimetre wide. And we'd have one of these edges at the front of our block and we would have one of these edges that's absolutely identical at the back. So, if we were going to look at the surface area here, we would have to look at first the surface area of the front section. The area, surface area of the front section would be the length times the height. The length is 4 and the height is 1, which would give us a surface area of one of the front face of being 4 centimetres squared. But we know that we've got two of those, so the surface area of the front and back, let's call it here, A of F and B, the front and back, would be 4 centimetres squared plus 4 centimetres squared, which would be 8 centimetres squared. Then we have of the sides, let's choose a different colour for that here, uh, let's have a uh, green colour. The two ends, what would be the surface area of them then? Well. The surface area of the sides, the green colour, would be length times breadth, same formula for surface area, which would be 2 centimetres long multiplied by 1 centimetre high, which is 2 centimetres squared. How many sides do we have? So this was the surface area of only one of the sides. So that was area of side 1. So area of both sides would be the 2 centimetres squared on the left-hand side plus the 2 centimetres squared on the back side. So it's two lots of two. So the total area would be 4 centimetres squared of the sides. Now we've calculated the front and the back and both of the sides. We now have to calculate the area of the top and the bottom. Well where would they be on our rectangle? Here is the area on the top of the box. If we were to put a lid on this box, what area would we have? So the area of the top would have exactly the same formula, length times breadth. The length of the top of the box is 4 centimetres. Uh, excuse me while I just turn that off. which is, uh, so the length of the uh, box lid would be 4 centimetres long 
multiplied by 2 centimetres wide, which would give us an area of 8 centimetres squared. We've got two of the tops of the lid, so the area of both tops would be 8 centimetres squared times 2, which would be 16 centimetres squared. So to calculate the area of a cuboid, it takes a little bit more work, but it's actually not um, uh, difficult to do. If we then look at uh, where we would get our answer here, we uh, can see that we have 8 centimetres squared as the area of the front and the back, 4 centimetres squared as the total area of the sides, and 16 centimetres squared of the top and the bottom. So to get the total surface area of the cuboid, we just add all of these um, small areas that we get. So the area would be 8 plus 4, giving us 12, plus 16, giving us 12 plus 16, 28 centimetres squared. Okay, so we got an area, a surface area of the cuboid of 28 centimetres squared for the same volume, um, but as the, as the cube that we had here, but the surface area is larger. This is actually what we would expect. We would expect the surface area of a cuboid to be larger than a cube because a cube is just like a square, the most effective shape that you can have. You will get the largest area for the smallest perimeter of a square. You would expect the largest volume um, for the smallest surface area if you were comparing for, for cube and cuboid. So that's how we calculate volumes and surface areas for cube and cuboids.